Hello and welcome to yet another Equity for Keeps video. In this video, we just, I think this will be our first coverage of uh, Novak Vax, Novavax, or something like that. Um, what we the stock came, to, the uh, company came to our attention by this piece written by Benny Schaffer. Benny Schaffer is the founder and CEO of uh, Schaffer Investment Research, and he wrote this, and he begins uh, by saying the broad market finally got a rare close of coronavirus related optimism this week. It reports that uh, the global pandemic could soon be reaching a slowdown. Lost in the shuffle of headlines about hospitalizations, intensive care admissions and new infection cases was news that US Donald President US President Donald Trump spoke with uh, pharmaceutical or biotechnology CEOs about developments in COVID-19 vaccines. President Trump went as far as touting the progress several companies have made in his speech on Tuesday. And uh, he further went on to say, uh, we're just going to go down here. So while most biotech stocks appear well equipped to ride out COVID-19 head headwinds, there's one name that could be headed for technical trouble. Novavax Inc. drew headlines this week after announcing its coronavirus vaccine candidate will start human trials in mid-May with preliminary results expected in July. That's great news for many health, uh, health experts that uh, predict a second wave of coronavirus case in the fall. But as far as NBAX is concerned, it's also got rally that the biotech stock enjoy in response to the news has taken it up to a long term trend line with historical bearish implications. Uh, okay. Um, so they're trying to say that um, I think uh, the last time he did that, he faced some headwinds. From its current patch of $17.18, a similar four week pullback would put the NBAX just above $16. Besides, of the stock's post beer gap levels for March 2019, stalling out, out at that level will shake a lot of bulls in the analyst community lose. Of the seven brokerages covering it, six uh, rate the security a strong buy with zero sell rating on the books. Plus the stock's consensus, consensus 12 month price target is $20.17, a 40% premium to current levels. Novavax shares have currently have uh, certainly been prone to big moves in recent months. Compare their 60 day historical volatility of 220%, topped in the 96 percentile. Interestingly enough, though, near term premiums look attractive at the moment. Based on the uh, Vax's uh, Schaefer volatility in index of 143%, ranking it in the 28th annual percentile. In other words, short term NVAX options have priced in lower volatility expectations just 20% of the time of uh, last year. Okay, so we'll, we'll just have a look and see. There's uh, something else written here by. Uh, on on what he fool and um, it's uh, just a few things. Um, is it, it's asking whether the vaccine will make you wealthy. Um, okay, let's see whether we really. Well, while it's easy to investors to think they've missed uh, the boat uh, with Nova Novavax, given the stock's uh, steep increase since the start of twenty twenty the best in the year to come for this little biotech stock. Okay, so Motifu, uh, it could be uh, one of the people who are bullish about them, or maybe not, or maybe not. The real tipping point at least, in my opinion, is the Nanoflu's recent, Nanoflu is one of its uh, uh, um, vaccines. It's recently announced uh, clinical trial results with uh, Novavax's flagship candidate managing to beat out all the well-known flu vaccines on the market. In this case, no fees. It seems likely that the Vavax will finally hit a much needed home run after a 30 year plus history. 
if all goes well with the regulatory approval for this flu vaccine, I wouldn't be surprised if the shares of the Valvax at least double over the next 12 months. With a market cap of 900 million and only 187, 18.7 million in annual revenue, it's anyone's guess how much higher the Valvax will value once its flu vaccine starts bringing in hundreds of millions of dollars of annual revenue. That's that by it, it itself should be enough to make investors excited about the company's future. So um, this is the chart of uh, the Varfax, the Varfax, but we just want to get to its summary page, summary page first of all before we come back here. So uh, here we can see uh, it. Uh, that's the market cap. Okay, the market cap we have here is the so 87, it's 876, it's million. And this is, I presume, the day it made that announcement. This is a more than 10% jump. And um, so it has a short interest of 6.9%, uh, which is about $61 million as against the $87 million, so which is uh, yes, obviously less than that. So, and it will take about uh, sh uh, short squeezes. Now, it's not going to take up to a day before all that is covered, going by its uh, average volume. So, it's not, um, if, if these things start happening, you, may, you, yeah, you, will not, you, can't be, you can't feel really strong that uh, a short covering rally is going to. Um, do uh, continue to draft things up, but it is still there. Six six percent is not enough, but in a very in a short term, it can uh, affect things, and um, it does contribute to volatility as, as well. You know, so even though it's not going to uh, take up to a day before the short positions are covered. So um, what next? Okay, let's. Uh, and then we have the shot ratio, the put call ratio. This is also these are also also important because um, they are they can add up with uh, the uh, shots, the the the, the shot ratio, shot uh, shot when combine them with uh, the shot interest, it can be a uh, an interesting mix. It can um, it can move things forward and it can influence um, people's decisions to uh, close positions if they are short or you know they are like so um, the put call ratio for one day probably the last trading day when this was recorded or something I'm not sure what it is it is 0 0.2 indicating that um, the call traders are heavy on the call side so it is a very small fashion you know, 0 0.2 and then the for 30 days it's 0 0.4 you know, so uh, the sentiment the the, the, the the data there indicates uh, it's not a sentiment; it's a fact. It, it, it's the, the traders uh, who are trading the options are on the call side mostly, and not just um, um, uh, not just uh, three against one and more than that. Um, so we have this chart again. Um, the range the range is uh, from the sixth of April to that of the tenth of April. Even though nothing happened on that tenth or tenth tenth of April, so it's about uh, four days, uh, um, four day range. So this is obviously the day that uh, I think they announced um, that yeah, the uh, the vaccine will uh, be trialed in uh, May. So it uh, rose from fourteen dollars eighty five and uh, slightly faced some headwinds at 16.59 and uh, faced yet more resistance at 16.76 before and then dropped to 16.54 and then did not look back even though just some slight uh, friction over there and then skyrocketed to uh, 18.13 you know, so what are we looking at here? 14, 1492 is about here. Yeah, so about uh, more than three dollar increase at that time. So, which is uh, which is um, if nothing 
18, a three dollar increase from uh, fourteen ninety whatever it is. It's uh, up to th up, up to um, thirty percent, thirty percent jump, you know, in a day. You know. Okay, so is that was that in a day? This is the seventh uh, of April. Okay, eight of April. So within two days, it rose uh, by thirty percent. So, um, so that is the highest it has gone within the last one week or thereabout. And then, um, as of Thursday, yeah, we just had a few uh, volatility, uh, sort of short squeeze uh, moments here. And um, yeah, and then let's see what's uh, going on here at the Mardi. Um, this is uh, obviously what happened over there, but um, you can also see that this bars did not cover much of the space, you know, which is also an indication that um, um, it would it may, may, they may have been short lived. Uh, let's see how long it was just one day that. Uh, Yeah, and then uh, it chopped again. So let's see what what, what it corresponds to. So I think uh, no, for the, the eighth of uh, of April, that was when this this uh, my D curve started to. Uh, Recover. So this is this this indicates the oscillation, and um, its tendency to uh, uh, move for the prices to uh, to accelerate. So uh, so the fact that you don't have. Uh, this area covered with uh, this bars indicates that it may have been something that was that uh, obviously it's it's an acceleration that occurred quickly and uh, soon uh, dissipated as well. So um, within the same day, you know, from that uh, eight, from that peak. Of uh, eighteen dollars and some fraction, yeah. From that peak of eighteen dollars, uh, by ten twenty-five, that was when that was, and then later on that day, it was down here. So that was 18 and some fraction over there. 18 to 8. So, yes. Okay. Um, the five bucks, no doubt, is uh, you can't um, can get you, uh, you can't ignore it. You have to uh, keep observing and um, see what's going on. If we have to. Uh, Get, get involved in them. Um, yes, I think it, it's what um, it has money in it, six, about sixty million dollars, and it also has uh, um, uh, this uh, um, zero point four percent of uh, put call ratio for the last ninety days, and then the last one day. Last Saturday, sorry, and for the last one day, it was a zero point two. So I would say yes, it's um, at the moment it's uh, um, um, the uh, short position, the short position, the short interest, and uh, the put call ratio has uh, made and backs a stock um, that is uh, for short term. It's worth. Putting your money because it's uh, the direction is going is um, um, uh, technically and uh, 
based on uh, reality as well, not just on speculation. It is, has locked up um, data that in, indicates that it is a sort of stock that will most likely go up in the near term. So it's for us, it's a buy. Okay. So um, thank you for watching this video, and uh, please don't uh, fail to subscribe. Thank you.